Welcome to a place where there's far beyond out of space, no weeping, no sorrows, imagine your sadness, wipe before your face, no demons, no legions, angels and butterflies, oh my, they going, no sun, so it won't be snowing, God's glory is the sunshine, the rivers is flowing, golden gates, paradise, in your face, I never want to leave this place, my mansion's right at the hilltop, if I ever need a thing, I call on my real pops, he'll be there for me in the blink of an eye, we caught up, in the sky, he's most high, he don't lie, I'm gon' cry, thinking about the angels that's gon' fly, they gon' cry, holy, holy is the one who sit, I don't forget the rap, God bless y'all, welcome to him, life, death, life, death, life, death, life and death on the tongue, life, death, life, death, life, death, life and death on the tongue. Hey, what's up, this is Denzel. Welcome back to Emoon Studio. If you have not subscribed, please subscribe. If you do not like my videos, I want you to like my videos. I want you to talk about in the comment section what you think heaven is going to be like. Or just post the scripture, you know. I'm trying to grow the channel. Um, the subscriber count is growing, praise the Lord. I'm trying to reach more and more people with the message of Jesus Christ. I want to see people come to Jesus. So God bless y'all. So when it comes to the subject of heaven and hell... Um, honestly, I, I hear a lot of misconceptions. I do. I mean, for example, when it comes to hell, a lot of people say you're going to go to hell for eternity. But the Bible says that hell is going to be thrown into the lake of fire. And then the people, before it's thrown into the lake of fire, people are going to be dumped out of hell to be judged. So everybody's going to eventually go into the eternal lake of fire. Hell itself is going to be destroyed. The Bible teaches it's going to be thrown into the lake of fire. So, you know, there's just one misconception, but I'm going to give you some of the misconce some of the misconceptions of heaven in this video. Um, I hear a lot of people say, and this kind of irks me sometimes, I hear a lot of people say that heaven is going to be boring. I mean, God made this world, and we have so much enjoyment, you know, um, in this life, and there's so much beauty to this world. I don't understand why people would think that it's, it would be any different in heaven. I don't think that sin is going to be there, of course, but I do think that there's going to be a lot of things to um, be excited about. Um, first thing I want to talk about is, is that not only will we have a huge family, you can picture that family. The Bible says there's going to be many, um, many people that are in heaven at a situation in the book of Revelation um, where it's just so many people, it's like the sand of the sea. But we're going to be a big family, but we're going to be kings and priests. Listen to this. The Bible reminds us that if you're faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over many things. But in Revelation 1 and 6, it says this, And he hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Some people have an idea that all we're going to do in heaven is just be at the throne and worship God forever. And though I love, and this is what people don't understand. Um, think about the most fun thing that you do or what gives you the most enjoyment. And um, imagine being able to do that for a long time. What people don't understand about worshiping God is, is that it's a supernatural ecstatic feeling. I mean, even people study, you know, dopamine levels and things like that. And, and it is a very enjoying experience to worship God when you do it in the spirit. I know a lot of people imagine worshiping God as just willpower and human strength, but really when you receive the Holy Spirit, he gives you a supernatural grace to worship God. I wouldn't mind laying at the feet of Jesus for a good 30,000 years just worshiping him. I honestly, I honestly, truly, I would love that. I would love to be at his feet for forever um, in that aspect, but the truth is, is that the Bible says we're going to be kings. What are we going to be kings over if we're going to be kings? You know, what are we going to be priests of if we're going to be priests? Well, the Bible teaches there's going to be a city in heaven. And we're going to be in that city. We're going to be citizens of that city. Another thing is the Bible says, Jesus promised, that there will be um, rooms for us. There will be places of dwelling. The King James puts it like this in John 14, 2. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So Jesus promises that there's going to be mansions. There's going to be um, places where he's prepared for us in heaven. So you might have a nice house when you get there, you know, just be prepared. 
the Bible teaches this, and this is a huge misconception because people think that we're going to be in the heaven, which I think when we're judged, and I'm sorry, somebody might be walking around upstairs, um, but when we're going to be judged, I believe we'll be in heaven. But the Bible teaches that, that the, new, the new heaven and the new earth, new Jerusalem is going to come down. So we're going to be in a city on, on a new earth. We're not going to be in this world anymore. Um, we're going to be in a new earth. Um, the Bible says it like this in Revelation um, chapter 21. It says, verse 1 and 2, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw a, a holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven um, from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So the Bible teaches that there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and we're going to be in a new earth. We're going to have a city that we live in. I'm telling y'all, there's so much that people say about having, knowing so little about God and about his word. Um, but Jesus, you know, when he comes back, he's going to be a king. He's going to be in Jerusalem, ruling and reigning and defeating his enemies. You know, you can have one conception all you want to, but when you read the Bible, it's a whole nother situation. The Bible teaches that God will be with us. When you think about that, I mean, I don't, I don't know like will he have a physical form in some way and be with us i don't know i know jesus will be there um but the bible says it like this in revelation in revelation 21 and 3 it says and i heard a loud voice from heaven a loud voice from the throne saying behold the dwelling place of god is with man he will dwell with them and they will be his people and god himself will be with them as their god so god is going to live with us in this new place um we call it heaven, you know, but it's really New Jerusalem when you think about it. Another thing, there's not going to be any more tears. Think about that. Think about all the things that causes people to grieve and sorrow, whether it be poverty or loss or death. There will be no more tears. The Bible says this. He will wipe away every tear. Sorry, this is Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. So there's not going to be any more tears in heaven. Think about this. What is something that every human being probably does when they go home, when they go to bed? They lock their doors. Um, I have a security system here at my house, just for protection. I own, I own a gun, and I bought some bullets, you know, like I... There's a lot that we put into protection, but the Bible teaches that there's not going to be any thieves to break in and steal in heaven. And it also says that um, there's not going to be any rust or corruption. I, I put so much work and money into my house that I own. It's crazy. And um, just listen to this. It says Matthew 6 and 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys or where thieves do not break in and steal. That's a promise from Jesus. He's basically saying to start doing good to people that can't do good to you. You know, give to people that can't give to you. You're going to store up some treasures in heaven. Do God's will. Obey his commandments. You're going to store up some things in heaven and they'll never die. They'll never go away. I mean, that's pretty amazing to me. The Bible teaches that biblical people will be there. Luke 13, 28. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but you yourselves thrust out. So in the kingdom of God, when we get there, there is going to be biblical people. Everybody wants to meet Peter. Everybody wants to meet Paul. Everybody wants to meet Jeremiah. But guess what? They're going to be there. We're going to be there with them forever. They'll probably want to meet us too. So it's going to be an awesome experience. And just to remind you, Heaven will be on earth, okay? God's going to come down with us. The Bible says, once again, in Revelation 21.1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. Look, there's going to be a new heaven, new earth. It's going to come down from God, and it's going to be amazing. You don't want to miss out on this. All you got to do is pick up your cross Repent of your sins and follow Jesus. That's your ticket. That's all you got to do. You know, your life's already stressed out. You're already getting backbited and lied to. And why miss out on this beautiful occasion? I want to remind you of this too, all you Christians out there. There's going to come a time 
when we can't praise him in the midst of a storm. You know, there's going to come a time where we won't be able to necessarily prophesy or cast out devils or do the work of the ministry. There's coming a time where you won't be able to praise God in spite of a feeling saying, don't praise God. Ay, ay, ay. And that just gets me going because, you know, why not praise him now? Give God the glory now. Worship him now. And there's coming a time, man. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10, it says, Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. But we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect is come, the partial will pass away. I love speaking in tongues, man. I really do. I love speaking in languages. However you want to say it, whatever you think it is. I love it. And there's going to come a time where I can't pray in tongues anymore. Why not do it now? Why not give God glory now? So God bless y'all. That's a little bit about heaven. I can't wait to go there. I think about it a lot. I think about the new kingdom that Jesus is going to have, the thousand year reign. I think about all those things, man. And um, let's just be prepared, y'all. God bless y'all.